Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and happy Valentine's Day if you are watching when this first posts. I hope that you are doing something with your loved ones, whether it's your romantic loved ones or your family or your Galentines. Today I'm very excited to get to share with you the limited edition box from the Literary Book Club that's been sent to me for review in honor of Valentine's Day. So of course it came in this lovely hot pink box that is fashioned to look like a book. Now this is separate from the quarterly subscription. The quarterly subscription is $74.99 per quarter plus shipping. It's always delightful to read a classic along with some beautiful gifts that Katie puts together for us. That is sort of the same idea with the limited edition boxes, but they're often a little bit more. They're a little bit more deluxe. So for that reason, this box was $124.99 plus shipping, and you weren't able to use my usual discount code just in case you are looking to get in on the quarterly subscription. She does open up the subscription every once in a while. Uh, you can get yourself onto a wait list if it's not currently open for the next one that is coming up. But my uh, code is just Maui Noel. That'll save you $5. And of course, I do have that affiliate link that'll be down there for you. And you can always use that link just to get to the website as well if you're looking for the next box that's coming up. But if you are interested in the limited edition boxes that she puts together, you definitely want to be on that list, on her email list, maybe even in the Facebook group, so that you get first crack at it. And of course, the Literary Book Club subscribers usually get first crack at those limited edition boxes like this one. So let's talk about this box, you guys. It is so appropriate for Valentine's. This is the first time that she's actually done a collection of poetry. It is a collection of the romantic poets. So that's kind of the late 1700s into the early 1800s, and there are six poets that were featured in this gorgeous Chiltern edition. She does do a lot of Chiltern edition books because they're so pretty, and of course they look so lovely all next to each other on a shelf. So some of you might know, I've kind of alluded to it a couple of times, that I did actually study poetry when I was in school, lots and lots of years of school. Not so much the romantic poets, I was more of a student of contemporary poetry, but of course I absolutely will love what they represent. And I think the romantics are really what a lot of people think of when they think of poetry. It's that sort of feeling and finding beauty in the everyday. And of course, when we read their poems now, sometimes they seem a little antiquated. The language is a little bit harder to access. But of course, it is beautiful if you take that time and of of course, I also just love the very subtle and beautiful rhymes and sort of the deftness of the writers, of the poets. So let's talk about this one. So what we got, and along with that gorgeous edition, which I'll show you a little bit more of it in a moment, is we got our nice little letter with a wax seal from Katie. And then of course, we always have her gorgeous handwriting and artwork. So this says, The Romantic Poets, just very simple. And I'll read the little paragraph on the back to you. It says, The literary world of the 19th century was lit up by six of English's England's greatest poets, Wordsworth, Coleridge, and Blake were in the vanguard of the early romantic movement that broke from the past, emphasizing the individual and personal, embracing imagination over reason. Romanticism's second wave saw Byron, Shelley, and Keats come to the fore, rebels who breathed new life into the movement, which spawned some of the best poetry in English literature. I can't wait to hear what you think of the book, the gifts, and the whole experience. So, of course, those are like kind of the bad boys, right? The three that came a little bit later. Um, that's what we always think of when we hear of Lord Byron, you know, who was supposed to be this super handsome, hunky guy, uh, and of course Keats and Shelley, and they all died really, really young. I think only one of them actually made it to his 30s out of those three. But let's talk a little bit more about the items that we get. So we always get a fun little swag bag, and of course this is the logo of the Literary Book Club, so let's see what we got. Now I did open a couple of the gifts this time around, but since it was just sort of a gift for each poet, for each section, um, I didn't necessarily open them in their entirety, so it'll be a little bit of a surprise for me as well, which is kind of fun. So we got a little book plate right here, a little sticky book plate, of course, very floral, uh, very appropriate. We got a sticker, and this one says forget me not and of course it's on a book which is lovely and then we got these are kind of like uh, portraits but they're also work as bookmarks so this is what it says <laughs> this is what it looks like it does actually say bookmark on the other side so that you know what you're supposed to use them as but I thought they were kind of nice they are the same on the other side but here is where it says bookmark down there at the bottom so nice kind of um, sort of evocative of the time period right ladies in their frilly dresses and their big fancy fashion hats 
Now, one of the things that I do love about this box that she does when she does these limited edition boxes and when she does the quarterly subscriptions is there's often something to enjoy while you read and then the gifts are labeled for you to open as you read. So we got one of those while you read little bags, which is always fun to see. So we got something to drink, a craft mix, strawberry mule mix. Now, I actually like to have these on hand for when I just need a little pick-me-up at the end of the day. And I absolutely love mules. Like just ginger beer is one of my favorite flavors in a cocktail. So very excited to try this strawberry version when I go ahead and read. And it kind of goes with the sort of pink and red of the Valentine's theme, right? And of course, we also always get a lovely word art print in Katie's beautiful calligraphy. This one is a quote from Lord Byron, uh, whose name was not actually obviously Lord Byron. That is his title, I believe. I forget what his name is, but I'll see if I can remember what it is. I think it's George Gordon, something like that. It says, there is a pleasure in the pathless woods. There is a rapture on the lonely shore. So very simple, very thin writing. It's kind of the sort of script that you imagine the poets writing their lovely sheafs of paper in, of course, uh, with no, no mistakes, right? They're just writing these gorgeous, gorgeous lines of verse without having to uh, make any corrections. Of course, they all were editing their things over and over again because a lot of them wrote really long, like sort of almost epic form poems where they did a lot of, they did a lot of editing. Of course, plus they were all working with actual rhyme structures. So it was just something that contemporary poetry does not do. Uh, and then of course we always have sort of our cheat sheet at the very bottom of the box if you just want to make sure you got everything or just to kind of recap. So I didn't take too close of a look but this is what it looked like this time. It did tell us all of the gifts that were included. There was a bonus gift as well as the while you read gift that wasn't labeled and then we got the six that go with the six different poets and it came in this little mesh bag so I figured since it was see-through it was probably okay to go ahead and open that up. And the little cheat sheet does confirm that it is our bonus gift. It is a cute little heart hair clip. Isn't that cute, you guys? So it's like a resin, like heart hair clip. So it just comes off like this. It's just one of those little baby alligator clips. So you could just put it right here to have your little accent, your little sweetheart um, accent, which I thought was kind of cute. It's nice that it's sort of an angular heart as well. So it gives it a little bit more edge, right? It's not super saccharine, but you guys know me and hearts. I, just, I have come around to liking hearts, but I'm still not. Not a fan of pink that much so red hearts or even better hearts that come in any other color but red or pink so let me put that off to the side and then we will get into our our book which is really fun now one of the really cool features I'll tell you about it in a second actually so we go ahead and open it up Again, it's those lovely slick and thick pages that our uh, children editions are known for. And then we have our table of contents. I put a little uh, sticky or a clip there to remind me of the page numbers. But we started with John Keats. So there was an introduction that was kind of comparing the romantic poets to like the 60s and Jim Morrison. And it's got that whole rebel bad boy vibe to it and how they were challenging the status quo. Um, and then we have a nice little portrait of each of the poets as well as a little one page sort of bio which is kind of nice it was a good reminder for me because I studied these guys a long time ago in college not not even in grad school really so for Keats you know when I think of Keats you think of Ode to a Nightingale Ode to a Grecian Urn those are kind of the big the big hits for him that I remember and I think he died at like 25 he was one of the one of the really young ones that did come later so they didn't put them in like chronological order which I did think was interesting so Ode to a Nightingale is kind of a longer poem but let me go ahead and find our Keats our Keats gift which came in this little red bag so you can see she put a little note that says open after reading the introduction and one Keats poem so you didn't have to read all of them which is kind of nice but I love the sort of uh, inspiration and encouragement to go ahead and give it a shot right so this is super cute you guys look it came in look what looks like a little pint of ice cream but it is mint chip chocolate truffles dark chocolate with a mint chip center you guys mint chip is like one of my favorite ice cream flavors these days I kind of go a little crazy because I've got a great gelato place that does crazy flavors but I was pretty excited about this so I love that it does say that it's oh it's from Seattle chocolate you guys I love 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 Seattle chocolate they have such great flavors their chocolate is really creamy and delicious so I wonder if it just looks like yeah it's just the basic um, basic but the delicious truffles that we know from Seattle chocolate what a cute little 
little container as well. So I didn't even realize that. I'm super excited. That was a really good start. And of course, you got to get chocolate in a Valentine's box. So well done, Katie. All right, let's move on. Then we have our Coleridge uh Coleridge one, which is kind of fun. This is the gift I wanted to tell you about. So this is kind of a special thing. She did work with a company called Blind Date with a book, which look how fun this is, you guys. I have obviously not opened it up because it was sealed. So she wanted to support a woman-owned business and the idea of kind of recycling and sharing your books, right? Because we all have them. So what they do is they wrap these up and they send you a book and it's a total surprise. Even Katie doesn't know what everybody got. And it is a gently used book. So I thought that was really fun. So we have a little bit of a mystery inside so it says a western romance historical family so they kind of gave you an idea and it says make a wish so we open this after reading Coleridge I'm not really sure why the blind date with a book went with Coleridge more than any of the other poets I don't know if there was any sort of um, correlation to which gift went with which, which poet but of course Coleridge is known for the really long um, the the Mariner poem what was it the rhyme of the ancient Mariner so let me see if I can find some information about that as we get into it so that was on page let's see so it's a really long 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 poem the rhyme of the ancient Mariner which I didn't reread I have to admit but it did take up a good portion of his section of this uh, edition so let's see what we got you guys all right let me pull this out trying to do it neatly nicely okay so oh looks like we got a romance it is by Linda Lael Miller it's like it's always interesting when the author's name is bigger than the title of the book it is the secondhand bride or just secondhand bride um it looks like it's part of a series from the McKettrick Cowboys but look at this hunky cowboy uh so it says Jeb McKettrick could not stay out of trouble and he's barely tied the knot with pretty school teacher Chloe Wakefield when he discovers her first husband is still alive oh, Oh goodness so we got a little intrigue as well as obviously some romance so kind of fun definitely looks like you know your romance novel that you would pick up at the store so that's perfect for the uh, holiday of course then we went move on to Wordsworth Wordsworth always just makes me think of course of daffodils that's uh and it's not even the name of the poem but like when I hear Wordsworth all I can think of is daffodils let's see if I can remember I think I had that poem in here I didn't uh, I didn't read all of the poems again I knew it was gonna be a little bit of a a little bit of a you know remembering my my school days but yes indeed we do have oh we have Tintern Abbey is what he's also known as known for um, I wandered lonely as a cloud that's the daffodil poem which I still remember um, reading it over and over again I must have written a paper on it but that is what I think with Wordsworth I think daffodils which is not a bad thing if people thought of me thought of me and thought of daffodils I wouldn't be upset with that all right, so here is our Wordsworth gift in this lovely bag with a really pretty heart on it. So that was a really nice package. So let me pull this out. Okay, this is cute. We got a little manicure set from the Vintage Cosmetic Company. So we've seen their products in a bunch of different boxes, um, but they do really cute, like very vintage, very floral kind of things. Let me see if I can get this out. Oh, it is like stuck on here, but you guys know what a manicure kit looks like. But this is nice because it's got the sort of fabric lining. So it's like a little nice and cushy, going to be easy to find in your purse, which, you know, a lot of us have those big purses where it's a big, big deep, dark caverns so it's nice to be able to find it easily and it is a really good thing to travel with so definitely kind of romantic even the tools inside there's a little silica packet even the tools inside of course have that really pretty floral pattern so very good to have on hand with you so that's what we got for wordsworth uh, i don't see any daffodils on there but it does it is floral then for Shelly, uh, Percy B. Shelley, who unfortunately, whenever I think of Shelley, I think of the fact that he drowned and the poet, the poem Osmandius. Let's see what we got for Shelley. So he was in the younger, the younger cohort. So here we got a little floral bag from for Shelley. <laughs> not from Shelly, but all of, I'm thinking of all of them as my Valentine's and they're all sending me gifts. So, ooh, this is a good one. So we got some beautiful bookish earrings for Shelly. It says, you pierce my soul. I am half agony, 
half hope and this is of course from Captain Wentworth of Jane Austen so this is I think a little uh, extra but it must come from a company that just makes bookish earrings so you can see it is of course going with that Jane Austen quote we have this little letter and it is sealed with a tiny tiny heart and it is in rose gold and she did put it on the wildflower paper company backer card so I'm not sure if this was maybe supposed to go in our persuasion um, box but I'm happy to have it in this one so I thought that I was like uh, you pierced my soul it's definitely not our Shelly so then of course we have a Lord Byron who is known for being Lord Byron I was gonna see if I could find his picture because he he looks pretty hunky here doesn't he I feel like that almost looked like a modern picture. So, of course, Lord Byron is known for his uh, child Herod's pilgrimage, uh, the, which is like cantos, so it's a longer poem. And then, of course, the poem that everybody knows uh, from Lord Byron is uh, She Walks in Beauty. So everybody knows that one. Um, but it's always a good one to reread, especially for Valentine's, because how lovely would it be to have someone write you a beautiful poem, a beautiful tribute. So let's find what we got for Byron. It came in this little package. So love getting all the packages. Ooh, so this is from Dirtbag Beauty. Oh, it's a whole day kit. So it says steam scrub soak. It is a face and body spa day kit. It is toxin free, eco-friendly and all natural. So let's see what it's got. It's got a bunch of stuff in it. It looks like we've got a steam clean. We've got an all buffed up. So maybe maybe an exfoliant. Oh, so we've got a botanical facial treatment. We have a stainless steel facial roller, a body mask and polish and an organic bath soak all in this one package. So I'm not going to open it up right now because I feel like I'll make a mess, but you got a nice little spa kit all in one. So right here across the top, they show you, you get these four, three different packages and then you also get the nice uh, little roller. So that's kind of a cool one. And then finally, we have Blake. Blake, I always kind of think of, I mean, I always think of Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. Um, and I always think of him as uh, kind of this like crazy, like fantastical notions. I don't know why I think that, but like maybe it's just because I think of Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. Um, but he is also known for, of course, the songs of innocence and experience. And let's see what we got for our final gift, which came in this lovely literary book club bag. And then if we have time, I will probably maybe see if there's a poem that's short enough to read. Oh, this is cool. So it's from Arrow. It's a DIY kit, Moonstone and Rose Gold Necklace Kit. That's so cool. Let me open this one up because this one isn't actually sealed where I have to, where I have to, um, slice it with like my paper cutter because guys I am so <laughs> I like to be so neat with things that I like to open these kinds of bags like this uh like this kit I like to do a, a paper cutter so that it's nice and uh straight across the top so this is really cool so we have uh another woman-owned business so you get to create your own necklace so they included the pliers the jewelry pliers and then they included uh, a chain and some really pretty little stones and a wire so you can create your own necklace Moonstone and Rose Gold Necklace Tutorial. That's so cool. I love that. So I'm hoping there's like a little bit more in terms of the directions because, um, but I love the idea of getting to be creative and we got some, some uh, Rose Gold and Moonstone. How beautiful. So what great gifts. So we got our truffles. We got our blind date with a book. I got a romance novel. We got our manicure set. We got our earrings, our spa set, and our necklace kit. So a little bit of everything. This was a fantastic, fantastic box. Plus we got our little drink mix to enjoy ahead of time and our bonus little hair clip. And of course the beautiful print. So let me see. I think I have time to maybe give good old Lord Byron a little whirl and we will end with a poem in honor of Valentine's Day. She walks in beauty like the night of cloudless climes and starry skies and all that's best of dark and bright meet in her aspect and her eyes, thus mellowed to that tender light which heaven to gaudy day denies. One, one shade the more, one ray the less, had half impaired the nameless grace which waves in every raven tress or softly lightens o'er her face where thoughts serenely sweet express how pure, how dear their dwelling place. 
and on that cheek and o'er that brow, so soft, so calm, yet eloquent, the smiles that win, the tints that glow, but tell of days and goodness spent, a mind at peace with all below, a heart whose love is innocent. Much more innocent probably than Lord Byron. <laughs> So you guys, let me know what you thought about this fantastic deluxe limited edition from our literary book club. I thought this was a fantastic one. I really enjoyed it. And I also just love the opportunity to go back to the romantic poets and read a little bit about their lives, but also enjoy their poems, you know, at a later point in life when it's not for a grade in a school class, right? So you guys let me know if you have a favorite poet. I would love to hear in the comments below. And again, have a fantastic, fantastic day. I'll see you all very, very soon in my next unboxing.